There's nothing more frustrating than a weak signal or an unreliable signal from one of these, your router. Well, today we're going to get rid of this and I'm going to show you how to install hardwired Ethernet sockets throughout your home. I'll cover the items that you need, how to run the network cables through your home and how to wire up the new Ethernet sockets. So stick around because you don't want to miss this little home upgrade and by the end of the video any of you guys will be able to complete this job nice and easily yourself. So a lot of people get confused with exactly what components they're going to need to carry out this job. Well first of all you'll need a reel of CAT6 cable or CAT5E cable. CAT5E is usually plenty good enough for your normal household use. CAT6 of course is a more future proof cable and does carry higher speeds but usually costs a bit more as well so weigh up the pros and cons and grab whatever cable you think you need. You're of course going to need some sockets. Now this is a double socket so a two gang socket and that will allow us to put two cables from our router into these two ports here to run two outlets elsewhere in the property. And at the other end of each cable, we will have a one gang socket like this to then plug a patch lead into whatever we're running in the room. So they are the key components for the job, but you'll also need other consumables like back boxes and the types are dependent on what walls you have in the property. There's a few little tools and things as well that I'll be using throughout the video and I will put links to them all in the description so that you can grab them once you've finished watching. So now what we're going to do is start routing the cable to the room that I want to supply with an ethernet cable and the first part of doing that and probably the scariest for some people is to find that route and get quite creative with where we're going to run this cable. So let's take a look in my property and I'll give you a few good examples and ideas of ways that you can route that cable to the room of your choice. So my router down here is in the corner of the property and I need to take the cable up to an upstairs office. So I need to run up the wall and through the floor space to my office. And the first hurdle I'm going to come up against, because this is a 1970s property, all the walls are solid. Ow. If you have stud walls, it is actually a lot, lot easier. But there are other creative spaces in your home that you could use to run your cable. Let me take the camera around the home with me and give you some examples. So my cable route is going to be up the wall from the corner. I will probably actually drill all the way through this pillar here, come out the other side, run a chase up to the ceiling, drill through the ceiling and then I'll be up into the floor space and from there it's really really easy. I'll show you how to do all that so don't panic. Ignore this lovely bathroom, it is a renovation. If you want to see more of the renovation series do make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you've got something that looks a little bit like this, this box section with possibly pipes from the toilet or sink going into it, then that is a stack with a soil vent pipe inside and there will be space inside this box section around the pipe inside and that will typically run from your ground floor all the way up to your roof. So for example there is a space there where you could get some cable rods to push that cable all of the way up through different levels of your home and then bring it out in the floor space to carry it to whatever room you require. You don't have to chase walls out in every scenario. So once you have a planned cable route let me show you the first step to installing the cable. The first step of this is to make sure you're installing your two gang ethernet socket here somewhere near your router because you're going to want to put a patch lead from the router to each port so don't put this miles away from your router and we'll now go ahead and put the box in the wall first. Good drilling practices do apply, make sure that you check for any cables or pipes in walls or floors because you don't want to go drilling through them. So where we're going to put our socket there, clear to drill through there. So now we'll get on with chasing this socket out and I'll show you how to do that. Now somewhere near your router you'll want to place your back box and make sure that you get it nice and level and then mark around all four sides of the box. Grab a 6mm drill bit and run a bit of insulation tape around it at the depth of the box so that you don't over penetrate and what we'll do now is chain drill around the perimeter of the mark that we made. If you've got an SDS drill like this, perfect. Take that material out to the depth of around 25 millimeters so that we can insert the metal box. Try 
inside the box in the hole and keep going and tidying this hole up until you can get that box in place. Okay, so my box now fits the hole and is nice and flush with the surface. You'll need to decide what hole you're going to use to run your cable through. I'm going to be drilling through the wall and chasing up the other side. So I want to go through the back of the box. So I'll remove one of these little knockouts here. Knock the grommet through and just remove a little tag. If you're using a metal box like this one, make sure you put a grommet in the hole. Now, we can mark where we need to drill through to the other side of the wall. So I'll use my long SDS bit to drill all the way through. Now I'm going to use a bigger drill bit to make it easier for us to pull those cables through the wall when it comes to actually trying to get them through. If the hole's too small, they're probably going to snag up. Before we continue with our cable run, we need to mark this box and screw it in place so that we can use that as a fixed point to run our cable through and then we'll come back a little bit later and wire this end up. But to fix this in place you just need to make a mark through one of the screw holes. The marksman pens are really good for this. We'll just use the marksman to mark through the little gap there. You can see we've now got a mark there to drill on. This brick is a bit blown out behind here, so we haven't got a huge amount to fix this to. Should this fail, we'll use some foam to fix the box in place. Now we'll use a six mil drill bit to drill the mark we made. We'll get a plug in there, and now we'll just screw the box in place. And we'll come back to this end a little bit later in the video. So you can see where we've come out the other side of the wall. So now what we're gonna do is chase up the wall to run our cables up into the ceiling above. This is the dusty, horrible bit. If you've got a wall chaser, go ahead and use one. If not, an angled grinder is fine, but you're gonna need a mask and some windows open and it's gonna make a lot of dust. Right, now mark your chase up the wall. Quite hard to record this in the corner. Um, mark them all the way from the hole that you've made up to the ceiling. So this is the horrible dusty bit. So make sure you've got all the relevant PPE and be ready for a lot of dust because if you're chasing out, inevitably, even if you've got a wall chaser, it's gonna make a lot of dust. If you are using a grinder, make sure you've got the correct disc for the job at hand and get ready to see nothing because I'm gonna cut this out now. grab a chisel or SDS drill and break the material out between the two cuts that we've made. Get the drill at a nice angle in the top of the chase there and drill up through into the ceiling space. Now I've already got some floorboards up anyway because we are rewiring this house. So I'm in quite a lucky position, but otherwise you're going to have to take any floor coverings up that are down like carpets and you're going to need to lift up a floorboard above where you now drill through to find the end of that drill bit. And you should be able to find the drill bit that you now poked up through there. You are now into the floor space above and you can run your cable through the joist and up the wall to a socket in whatever room you want. So now you've found a clear route, hopefully, through to where your new Ethernet socket is going to be placed, I'd suggest you come back to the start and start pulling some cable through to your new location. So we'll feed our cable through from our socket where we started, through to the other side of the wall first of all. We've got that cable through the other side and we can just pull that up into our chase now. Carry on pulling this through all the way to the ceiling above. Now you should be able to retrieve it the other end and then pull through the required amount. Don't cut off the other end until you're absolutely sure that you've got enough cable to reach your new socket. So I've measured off and I know that I've got loads of cable now to reach into my office and run up the wall to my new socket. So I can go back downstairs and cut off the excess cable. For now, you want that cable to be left a little bit longer than you need so you've got plenty of slack to work with. I'm putting in two cables with a two gang socket so I'm gonna repeat that process again and run another cable up into the floor space above to another room. But if you're just doing the one, then you don't need to repeat that process. So you've seen a little bit on how to route cables, especially 
especially in an old property like this one, that is the hardest part of the job. What you need to do now is finish doing that, take that cable all the way to your new Ethernet socket location, and then do the same as we did at the beginning of the video and chase out a knockout box into the wall ready to wire up your new socket. Now what we'll do is move on to wiring the sockets themselves, fixing them back to the wall and carrying out a test on them. But before we do that, do make sure that if you're getting value from the video that you give it a like and you subscribe for more content like this. And do me a favour and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you want to see next time on the channel. So first of all, grab a Category 5E compatible socket. Inside the bag you'll find a little cable tie and a little label. That way you'll be able to label each of these sockets so that you know which rooms in your home they feed. Your cable tie is important, so we'll keep that at hand. Remove the small cover from the back of the socket, leave that to the side for a moment and take out the screws. We don't need those until we fix the plate back to the wall. We're now ready to wire this up. You can see we've got lots of little numbers in here and you can see they are color coded as well, which makes it really, really easy. You can see the little terminals here. Those are the terminals that we will wire our cable into. Before we trim this back, the first step of the process is to grab the cable tie and place that inside the little cutout just there on the socket and then you want to trim back the outside sheath of the cable just enough so that the cable tie will catch onto it. So if you look there we need to trim back to around where that little T is there on the cable. So you'll now need one of these little tools. I can't remember the name of them to be honest, but I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab one. And we use this to trim that outside sheath of the cable away. So just pop the cable in there and then you spin that little tool around and that will cut through the outside sheath of that cable without damaging the copper conductors inside. So you can see there that's trimmed back perfectly. Now just cable tie that cable in place. So just start the cable tie off and then place that cable so that it just catches on to that grey outside sheath there. And that fixes the cable in place should it get pulled. And just use your cutters to trim off the end of the cable tie. So it should look something like that. And if we move the conductors out of the way, you can see there that our cables are color coded. So don't unwind these cables because they are paired up for a reason. Now the first cables that you want to do are the ones closest to the end here. So that would be, first of all, number two, which is a solid orange. So that's that cable there and number one, which is orange and white striped. So move all the other cables out of the way for now. Now unravel those two wires there and roughly place them where they want to go. So we know where those two want to go. Just pull them roughly so that they catch on. You can see there, if you push them down into the little terminals, they do catch very slightly and they're kind of in place, but they're not fully inserted yet. Now grab hold of the tool again and use the little end here to push that wire down into the terminal. Make sure it's all the way down and it's not going anywhere. Do the same with number one there. You can see both of them have been pushed all the way down. They are right at the bottom in the terminals there and the little claws will have cut through the outside sheath and they will be making contact with the solid copper strands inside. So you haven't got to worry about stripping them back. And now all we need to do is trim off the excess. Now repeat that process for the other six cables. Of course, make sure that you match up all the colors as you see here. So that is it. That cable is going nowhere and it is properly wired up. Now pop the little terminal cover back on. Of course, if you're doing two cables, repeat that process on the second cable. But what we'll now do is go back to the wall and I'll show you how to fix this back in place. Now you've got your wires in place, you can push the face plate back to the wall and put the screws in the little lugs behind. Use a small level just to make sure the face of the socket is nice and level and then tighten up the two screws. I'd now recommend that you use some easy fill to repair around the sockets like this and some bonding to repair any chasers or big holes that you've made to root your cables. Repeat the wiring process throughout any new Ethernet sockets 
throughout your home and then we'll move on to testing. So to finish off the job I'd recommend you grab one of these little testing units because you don't want to get the cable in, cover all the chasers up, finish everything off and then find out that there's a problem with the cable or any of your connections. They're really easy to use, they're really cheap, they're about a tenner. Um, let me show you how to use one. Grab the end of the tester that says master on it. You'll need a short lead on the end of it like this and then just plug that ethernet lead into the first socket. Just switch the tester on, you'll see the light at the top starts to flash. Now grab the other end which says remote on it and plug that into the corresponding socket and just like you see here what you should have is all of the numbers lighting up from one all the way down to eight without any numbers missing and that tells us that the socket is wired up correctly. I hope the video has been helpful for you. If you've enjoyed it, hit one of these videos because you're going to like them ones as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.